In this lesson, I'm assuming that you've already encountered the concept of differentiation before. And you're aware that if y equals ax to the n, dy by dx, the derivative of y with respect to x, is a n x to the n minus 1. You may remember it as multiply by the power and reduce the power by 1. For example, if y equals 4x cubed, then dy by dx is equal to 4 times 3 times x reduce the power to x squared, so 12x squared. Up to now, you may have only encountered functions where n is a positive integer. But in this lesson, we're going to look at examples where n is a fraction or negative. And you will need to do some converting and using your index laws. So here's the first example. We've got y equals 1 over x. Now, to use the formula from before, we really need y in the form of ax to the n. x in the denominator means it's x to the power of negative 1. So this is 1x to the negative 1. Now I can differentiate just as before. So the derivative of y with respect to x multiply by the power and reduce the power by 1. This doesn't look very nice and really we want it to look something along the lines of the original function. So again using our index laws, negative 1 over x squared. In example number 2 we've got y is the square root of x which is x to the power of a half. So dy by dx, multiply by the power, half x, reduce the power by 1 to the power of negative a half. This doesn't look very nice again, so using our index laws, this is 1 over 2 root We can also work with polynomials, multiple terms in an expression. And it's helpful just to write each of these terms in the form ax to the n. So the cube root of x squared, that's x to the power of 2 thirds. And if x squared is in the denominator, we can write that as x to the negative 2. Once I've rewritten y, I can then differentiate each term. 6x, take 2, plus 7, the constant term, differentiates to 0, plus 2 thirds x to the negative a third, negative 2 times negative 5, so plus 10 x to the power of negative 3. And to finish, we'll tidy this up a bit so we haven't got any negative or fractional indices. 6x take 2 plus 2 over 3 cube root of x plus 10 over x cubed. Using the Casio class pad, I'm going to look at a couple of different ways to differentiate functions. So firstly, into main, and I'm going to enter the function we were just looking at using the keyboard and the 2D tab. So we've got 3x squared, take 2x plus 7. Then to do the cube root, we've got this symbol here, cube root of x squared and we'll use the fraction template for 5 over x squared. So you see when we 
press execute, the class pad just confirms that this is the function, but it turns all the thirds into fractional indices. So instead of saying the cube root of x squared, it already converts it to x to the power 2 thirds. Now I'm going to differentiate this. So I go interactive, calculation, and the top one is diff for differentiate. Now if you leave the expression blank, it will differentiate the last expression that was on the screen. Our variable x and then order 1. We'll look at what that means later on in this lesson. OK. And it differentiates it all for you. This really doesn't look very nice, so let's see if we can simplify it. Interactive, transformation, simplify. And again, leave it blank. And this is more like what we wanted it to, to be. The order is different, but we've got 6x plus 2 over 3x to the power of a third, which is 2 over 3 cube root of x, plus 10 over x cubed, take 2. When we differentiate a function, one of the uses for this is to find the gradient. And the derivative dy by dx is also known as the gradient function. So if I want to find the gradient of a function, I first need to differentiate that function. I'm going to rewrite the function so that it's easy for me to differentiate. So 16 over x is the same as 16x to the negative 1. When I differentiate that function, that's going to be 2x takes 16x to the negative 2, which is 2x takes 16 over x squared. And this question is saying, find the gradient at the point 420. So I substitute in an x value of 4 at 420. The gradient is equal to 2 lots of 4. Take 16 over 4 squared. So 2 lots of 4 is 8. 4 squared is 16. So that's 1. And the gradient at that point is 7. Now let's look at how the class pad can help us to find the gradient of a function at a particular point. So we're still in main and we'll clear what we had, clear all. This time my function is x squared plus 16 over x. And I want to differentiate this function, but I also want to substitute in the value of 4. So this time I'll go interactive, calculation, diff, leave the expression blank, and I want the derivative at a particular value. So I'm going to select that button, the derivative at value, and the value is when x is 4. So the expression is what I left on the screen, variable x, order 1, value 4, that's just the x value. OK, and straight away we know that the answer is 7. Similarly, in example number 2, we've got a function y equals 12 root x. Firstly, we're going to write it so that it's easier for us to differentiate. Then dy by dx, half times 12 is 6, x to the negative a half, which is 6 over root x. At the point 424, the gradient is 6 over root 4, 6 over 2, which is 3. In this second example, the function is y equals 12 root x, and we want to know the gradient of the function when x equals 4. So there's no need to clear the screen. This is already set up to find the gradient at a particular point. I'll just change the function. So I want it to be 12 
square root of x and execute and everything else automatically adjusts. It's still an x value of 4. I would need to change this to find the gradient at another point on the curve. But you can see the criteria required here. Differentiate the answer, which means differentiate what was already on the screen. With respect to x, order 1 with an x value of 4. And the class pad tells us that the gradient at that point is 3. We're also going to be working with second and higher order derivatives. Here's an example, the function y equals 2x to the power of 5. Now the first derivative means we differentiate this function. So if y is 2x to the 5, dy by dx is 10x to the power of 4. This is known as the gradient function. If I then differentiate dy by dx, I get the second derivative of the original function and this is called d2y by dx squared, the second derivative. So I use the same process, 4 times 10 is 40, then reduce the power by 1, 40x cubed. So in effect that's the gradient function of the gradient function. And we can keep going, we can find the third derivative and the fourth derivative, so d3y by dx cubed, 3 times 40 is 120, reduce the power by 1, and the fourth derivative would be 240x. And obviously I could keep going, the fifth derivative, d5y by dx to the 5, that would be 240 we would get down to a derivative of 0. To differentiate 2x to the power of 5, I can follow the same procedure. Calculation, diff, leave everything alone, OK. Now, to find the second derivative, if I just press execute, it will repeat the same procedure. So it differentiates the answer, press execute, differentiates again, keeps differentiating, and so on. But if I want to go straight to the second derivative, I can go to interactive calculation diff, and my expression was 2x to the 5, variable x, but if I want the second derivative, it's order 2, go straight to the second derivative. There's another way to do this, which is on the 2D tab, the Calc menu. You can see there are two derivative options. If you just want the first derivative, then you can use the one on the left. But to get higher order derivatives, use the one in the middle of that row there. So we can change that to 2dx squared and I still want to use 2x to the power of 5, so I'll drag that into there and I'll get the same answer again. As you continue to study calculus, you will learn more about second derivatives and their significance, but for now we just want to be able to work with them, calculate them and use information such as this. So given the function y equals 2x cubed, and we want to know the coordinates of any points on that curve where the second derivative is 24. So let's start by finding the first derivative. If y is equal to 2x cubed, then the first derivative is 6x squared, and the second derivative is equal to 12x. Now if the second derivative is 24, that means 12x is 24, so x must be 2. We haven't quite finished though because the question asks for coordinates, so we need to go back to the original equation. y is equal to 2x cubed, so that's 2 times 8, which is 16. So the coordinates we're looking for are 2, 16.